to know what the other one is feeling. If you have a good relationship, there's a lot of love that's easier. I think having that relationship is really important to them because there'll be ups and downs no matter what in any, any um, partnership. It's hard to go through the hard times if you're not friends. If, if somebody's blaming the other person, it's just like this sport is pretty tough. TSN proudly presents coverage of the 2005 BMO Financial Group Canadian Figure Skating Championships from London, Ontario. In behind me across the street is the John Labatt Centre where the championships are taking place and welcome to snowy London, everybody. I'm Dave Randorf. The snow's actually lightened up in the last half hour, believe it or not. Uh, a blizzard has blanketed most of southern Ontario. It's been falling all day. It's expected to continue right through the night. Temperatures here right now are... They say minus 20 feels a lot colder than that, I can tell you that for sure. But uh, I don't know how the weather is where you are across the country, but bundle up and settle in for two hours of coverage this afternoon on TSN. Of course, two more hours coming up tonight in prime time on CTV. We've got the original dance coming up. We will look back at some junior performances. But the story here in London, folks, continues to be what happened last night. Joanny Rochet, the new Canadian women's champion, and if you missed it, I tell you what, you missed something else. Some are calling it the best free skate in the history of Canadian women's figure skating. She went out there and lit up the John Labatt Center. She was first out of the gate and left absolutely no doubt who the new Canadian champion was going to be this year and quite likely for years to come. She is going to be very, very tough to beat if she can continue the form that she showed us last night. In fact, under the new scoring system, statistically, it was the best free skate and the best overall score that's been skated anywhere in the world this year. Joanny Rochette, and all the, uh, although the world team has not been officially announced yet, she is obviously now headed to the World Championships upcoming this spring in Moscow, and she's now a favorite and a contender to find herself standing on the podium. She has served notice that she's arrived not only nationally, but internationally, and of course a Canadian woman has not won a medal at the world since Elizabeth Manley did it back in the late 80s. So for more on that story, let's send you back across the street into the arena where it's a little warmer. We'll hand it off to Rod Black and Tracy Wilson. You guys take it away from here, but, you know, guys, I, I'm kind of used to the weather out here. I think I'll just hang out here for a while. And thank you, Dave. Come inside, get warm. The weather is brutal outside. It was very warm in the building last night, and the heat supplied by Joanny Rochette. Congratulations, champ. Thank you. <laughs> Have you had any sleep? Um, not so much. My family was all here to cheer on me, and we had a good celebration last night. Fabulous. Life any different so far? It's only been a few hours since you've been uh, declared Canadian champion. I know this has been a dream for you uh, for quite some time. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I achieve uh, one part of my goal. I have many goals in skating, but just to achieve one now, it's feeling really good now. How important was it to you to uh, be Canadian champion? And for how many years have you been focusing on that title? Um, since I'm a novice skater, I want to be a senior champion one day. But um, I think the two last year were more the year where I really want to achieve it. And this year I did it, so I was very uh, excited about it. Let's go back to last night. We're going to relive this with you. You, by the way, are the only skater to ever win novice, junior, and now the senior wow. Canadian championship. So, <laughs> Joanny, last night this is you at the warm-up. What, what was going through your mind as you were getting ready for your free skate? Uh, I was very nervous because I was skating first, and this is not the position I like to skate to usually. But um, I felt real, really relaxed in the warm-up, and I would have uh, enough time to do all my, my jumps, so that gave me more confidence. Now, I heard you backstage were very relaxed and calm. Did you feel a little bit different going into this program than perhaps some of the others? Yes, it felt very different from the short. In the short, I was very worried that uh, I would do again what I did last year. Uh, this was Yesterday, I was a lot more relaxed on the ice, and... I think it's the program I the most enjoyed skating to. Now, do you want to see the program again from last <laughs> night? Have you, have you watched it on tape? I'm sure you saw the highlights. Let's go through yeah. uh, last night, four minutes 
away from a national championship. Uh, going into my triple toe, triple toe, I was very confident. Uh, just as I took my first stroking, uh, I just looked at Jolie and Sebastian with a smile because I, I knew I was going to nail it. What did you think? Um, I was relieved because I think it was my main goal to uh, do, my, do my triple triple. And after, I was a lot more uh, uh, confident on the ice. I think I didn't see the board coming yeah. on that one. <laughs> had you also thought about the lead that you had? It's such a different scoring system, and really all you had to do last night was to skate clean. Did you talk about that at all or think about that? Um, I, I knew I had a big lead, but still, uh, I knew it wasn't enough to win. I need to do a good program. Um, but I want to do a clean program for myself, uh, not only for winning, but just to prove myself that I can do what I can do at home in training. <laughs> As you're watching this, are you more impressed with how you skated, or did, how did it compare watching to feeling it? Usually, I, I don't like to watch myself skate because you see all the little mistakes that you do. Uh, but I think it's important to watch you because then you can improve after for the next competition. Guess what? There are a lot of people who love watching you skate. <laughs> Especially now. Tell me a little bit about this program, the choreography by David Wilson. Yes, I really enjoy working with David. Uh, he's a real artist, and he does such great choreographies and a good work. <laughs> um, that last didn't feel as good as the first one, but it was very important for me to fight for it. And, uh, then I knew I was going to do the flip style because usually they're my best jump, so I was very excited after it. You were just knocking triples off. You think about it, your short program to this free skate, you didn't miss a jump. Yeah, um, maybe I was more uh, focused this year than last year, but a lot more ready for national, a lot more trained, and that made a difference, I think. performance or you knew from the beginning you couldn't put a foot wrong did you kind of um, have that sense i kind of that feeling since last week before coming here i was getting really good at home and when i went on the ice for warm-up i i knew that i was going to do good so it was kind of a good feeling knowing I was happy I wasn't late on the music because of my Grand Prix. I, I tend to be late sometimes on this part. Crowd really into it. Do, do you feel the energy building from the crowd as well? Yes, I did feel when I did my last double axel. I was so excited and I could hear the crowd cheering for me. And <laughs> this was such a good moment. Now you know, you know it's, it, you, you, you know you've won at this point. Probably you said, this is it, this is what I've done. Yes, I know, and I couldn't even hear the music to come out of the spin because the hell was, the crowd was too loud. Your new coaches, Jose Normand, Sebastian Britton, your yeah. thoughts on them and what they meant to, to your performance here? Um, they were very happy for me, and I think they've done such a good work with the program and helping me uh, working not only in the jump, but uh, choreography and everything. And Sebastian's been through this before, so he knows what it takes. Did you realize that you had the best free skate in the world this season? Well, that's interesting. <laughs> I didn't... Uh, uh, for points, that was the best that would have beaten Slutskaya. Does, does that help you, like, when you think towards the World Championships? 
Uh, it does help on confidence. Um, of course, this is national, but I want to put a performance like this at Worlds because this is my main goal for this year, improve on my last year's results. So I just hope to be as relaxed as I was uh, last night. When you watch that performance, do you feel that it stacks up with, with any of the other skaters in the world? I, it's hard to tell because when you watch yourself, it's always different and you're always more crit criticized and critical, yeah. critical on yourself. Um, but I think I did a good job, but I've got a lot more things that can be better. So uh, it's interesting. It leaves uh, good motivation when I go back home to work on those things. I know your mom and dad were happy last night. <laughs> you had to be too. Uh, country celebrates with you. Congratulations. Thank you. The final results uh, last night, Joanny Rochette. Look at the point total. Cynthia Phaneuf, your good buddy, will go to the World Championships with you. Yes. <laughs> Mira Leung. On the podium, the bronze medal, the final results from last night. The new Canadian women's champion, Joanny Rochette, first champion crowned at the BMO Financial Group Championships for 2005. When we come back, an afternoon at the dance. The original dance is next on TSN. Like this lift, where Patrice goes on to one foot, some of the most difficult lifts in the world. Well, all of that training is paying off. That was last year in Edmonton. Marie-France de Broy, Patrice Lazon, the first official year in the era after Shaylin Bourne and Victor Kratz and becoming champions for a second time. Looking to defend, a welcome back. We are live in the Labatt Center in London, and we have 10 dance teams to come here today in the original dance. Uh, here is how they stack up after the compulsory dance to Broy and Lazon leading the way. They have quite a, a strong lead over Megan Wing and Aaron Lowe, who are sitting in second place. And in dance, it's really hard to score the big numbers. What the skaters need to do is skate clean because there is a real danger of dropping if a mistake is made. Skating first in this flight, two flights to come. Longtime competitors, 16 years here. Megan Wing and Aaron Lowe, they've won more medals than any other team here, just not the medal that they've always wanted, the gold. They've had six bronze medals, a couple of silver medals. I wanted to ask you about the judging system, the new scoring system, and I know people are always asking you if you like it, what you, you know, there is some confusion for people in the building, at home at times. How does the scoring system translate to the discipline of ice dance? Well, with the ice dance, I think it has helped because they've tried to uh, identify the athletic component of ice dance, but it is growing, going through some growing pains uh, because what's happening is for the skaters to get a high degree of difficulty on their lifts, they're doing a lot of the same movements, like the upside down split movement, which takes the degree of difficulty up a notch. So there are some problems, but overall, I like what it's doing for ice dance for the sport of figure skating in general. With the original dance, there are the required elements you do have to complete a dance spin, two different lifts, a diagonal step sequence, but the key to this dance is the midline step sequence, where the skaters skate side by side, not touching. And that's where they can score the very big points, but that's also where the mistakes happen. The idea of the dance to win the component marks is to capture the flavor of the rhythm, which must be a slow fox trot, quick step, Charleston, a couple of combinations of those types of music. So the character and the expression of the dance is very important. Here's Martine Patineau and Pascal Denis just a few moments ago. They took a spill right into the boards. They have not had a very sharp warm-up, and they will skate second, wing and low first, and then also in this flight, last to skate in this flight, will be the Canadian champions, De Broy Lazon. Marie-France Dubray there in the pink dress has uh, suffered a shoulder injury uh, earlier this season and in November, and they do some very athletic lifts and puts a lot of pressure on uh, Marie-France's shoulder. She thought her sternum was actually going to split. It became so painful. They've had to modify some of their lifts and their practices, uh, leave out lifts in a lot of their practices, and save themselves for the competition, but that now is the athletic nature of dance. should also tell you... Uh, the hometown of favorites will skate in the final warm-up, third in the final warm-up. Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer 
who were juniors a year ago move up to the senior ranks and they have people talking here oh and not just here uh, they are from London and so they have a lot of support but internationally they have a tremendous amount of support and just wait till you see them they are so precious and have a wonderful future in fact their free dance was the best at the junior world championships and they're trying to make the move up into the senior rank they'll fit in very nicely sitting in fourth place Megan Wang and Aaron Lowe long time contenders podium finishers in ice dance second last year they finished in 11th place at the world championships They'll open with a fox trot and then move into the Charleston, skating to just in time, and then that's a plenty. the lifts seem like they are part of the old overall dance. They did that well by Aaron keeping the rhythm during the turn. And here now they move into the diagonal step sequence. They must stay close in dance position. Four levels of footwork difficulty judges assessing the levels as they skate. Just in time, you season for these two years of competing and competing internationally won their first Grand Prix medal this year this is the key element I talked about at the top very nice twizzle section that's where the mistakes will happen if they do very well done judges assessing the skaters as individuals they've handled that well kept their flow but also had the difficulty well done if you like ice dance and you like skating can't help but like these two great athletes Aaron low Aaron by the way is the captain of the national team again they've been around for a while continuing to skate still love this sport they give back a lot to this sport and they gave it their all here in this OD. So this is the midline step sequence, and those are the twizzles that take place within the step sequence. Now, the judges that assess the degree of difficulty are the technical specialists, so they will be looking at the four required elements and give it a level from one to four. And that's based on the, the amount of footwork and the variety of turns within those steps. But that's where the skaters can earn, if they have a level four in the straight line, they can earn a base mark of 6.8 for that one component. Said they like to give back to their sport in uh, good hearts. Megan and Aaron have also been asked to appear in Plymouth City, Michigan. They're skating in a benefit upcoming for victims of the devastating tsunami. So the Vancouver skaters lead the way, wing and low. And the number to beat, 95.74. Combination of the compulsory and the original dance. And on the ice, Martin Patineau and Pascal Denis. If you follow dance, you know that Pascal used to skate with Jose Pichet. This is a new partnership. And as mentioned, they took a bit of a tumble 
in the warm-up. We'll see if that affects them here in this original dance. They will skate to selections from the Chicago soundtrack. The straight line sequence. A slight touchdown and out of sync on the twizzles there. Good energy in this dance. They now are doing the diagonal step sequence. You know, it's tough when you're a new team to, to make it look smooth. You have to think through the program. They've done quite a good job for being such a new team. Couple of glitches and hiccups in that. Maybe that was some residue left over from a shaky warm-up. Both of these skaters have won bronze medals at the Nationals with different partners. We'll have their marks from London after this. 1994, Pascal Denis won a bronze medal with Jose Pichet five years ago at the 2000 Nationals, and now they are together. And Martine has coached for the last 10 years and decided to get back into the game. But you could see there on the twizzle section, um, they got out of sync. And Pascal also touched down in the middle of one of his twizzles. So that can drop not only the degree of difficulty in the twizzle, but that then takes down the whole degree of difficulty of the footwork sequence. So you can lose a lot of points on that one step. They had some nice highlights in the program, some difficult lifts, and I particularly liked their spin. A little rough in places, but that's very much to be expected because they are such a new team. They were fifth after the compulsory. They will carry over 31.43, an overall total of 79.51, puts them in second behind wing and low. And you will see, as again we're showing you uh, 10 dance teams, you're going to see a, a big difference between the top ranked teams and the lower ranked teams, the building teams, those teams that are still trying to make their mark. And it'll give you a good perspective of how good the good ones are and what the other ones have to work on. On the ice, second in the juniors last year, this is Lauren Sempt and Leif Gislason. And this is their only their second year together. Lauren's first year at the senior level. Leaf has been sidelined with an injury to his right knee, and they, that occurred in June, and they've only been back on the ice for a month. So this is a team that's really just happy to be here. You must remember this. A kiss is the kiss. A sign is just a sign. The fundamental things to apply.
watch that, you wouldn't think they missed a day of training. What stands out for me is just how smooth this team is. And, and what allows them to be that graceful and flowing is their use of deep knee bends. Watch deep in particular how low he gets to the ice, the deep knee bend across the ice as he's skating. Dances it at its best, floating, free, ah, oh, lovely. Just up from the junior ranks. Look like they belong at the senior level. Lauren Semp from Vancouver. Last year, second as juniors. Life used to skate with another Lauren a couple of years ago, Lauren Flynn. They also were second in juniors. And this partnership, first step up to the senior stage. And wow. Oh, yeah, they, they belong, and I think they've got some, some uh, positive years ahead of them. Look at the edges here in the straight line sequence, and wonderful unison, skating on one foot, so they have to keep working the knee and the thigh. Very pretty spin, and the spins and the lifts looked like they belonged in the dance. They didn't kind of stand out like a sore thumb or like a major highlight. They just were part of the whole overall dance. This is a team like Born and Kratz, who really stand out for their deep knee bends and their big curves and lows. Now again, they were in seventh place. They carry over 30 points from the compulsory total 79 4 6. Gee, just only less than a point behind Patino and Denis. And they had a better original dance. There's Shaylin Bourne, who is now a coach. Victor Kratz watching alongside his wife. In the stands, Shaylin Bourne now a solo skater in the pro ranks. And here on the ice, Milan Girard and Bradley Yeager. Their first trip to the seniors was last year. They finished eighth. Well, it's a Much improved this year in skating to Moon Dance and then Man with the Hex. Fantabulous night to make romance Neat the cover of October skies And all the leaves on the trees are falling To the sound of the breezes that blow And I'm trying to please to the calling Of your heart strings that play soft and low And all the night's magic Seems to whisper and hush and all the soft moonlight seems to shine You can't hide, can I just have one more moon dance Off there on the twizzles And again there Can I just make some more romance with you, my
like Lauren and Leaf, they're very edgy and smooth. This is quite an intricate piece of choreography for the entire dance. So a little more room for air, and there's another mistake on the spin. It looks to me like they're trying just a little too hard. Got to pull back a bit more, skate clean. They can't take any more errors. Wow, this is a very difficult program. They just don't stop. Well, I'm glad they allow the music they do now in original dance. It's added so much, adding lyrics, adding the music that we know, many of us know. Gerard and Jaeger. And De Bruyne's on. Will skate next at the Labatt Center in London. Hey, Quebec, just outside of Montreal, and Bradley Yeager from Ottawa, training at Saint Hubert. Well, this was not the performance they wanted to have for this original dance. You watch here on the twizzles. First, Mylene got off. Now watch Bradley there. He touches down. And so he didn't complete the rotations. He drops the level of difficulty of the whole footwork sequence because of that mistake. It looked to me like they were trying a little too hard. They've made drastic improvements to their skating this year. Here is their second major error on that spin. I think they recovered enough to get full credit for that, though the quality marks will be lower. But I think they've made some great improvements. They like their um, their programs, and they've got some good stuff. Pushed it a little too hard and made some mistakes. This is a team that's uh, that's new together. They've only been together for a couple of years, and and what I think these two need is some international experience. They have a bright future, well coached. There are the judges now. You can see the judges panel, uh, and you've also got the technical specialists there and what the technical specialists are doing is they're reviewing the elements just to make sure especially with the mistakes i mean they can take a footwork pass from level four to a level one and uh, so that's what they'll be doing here you can see they're reviewing the lift bradley i'm sure is the only skater here who as a pacemaker, had some heart problems last year. And doctors installed a pacemaker, been fine ever since. But obviously something to be concerned about. But their overall total is 73.59. Currently they are in fourth place. And before the day began, they were in sixth place overall. So they might drop depending on what happens with the teams ahead of them. There are Canada's champions. Wing and low lead, 95-74. They were in second. Three and a half points back, two and a half points back, rather, behind De Bruyne Lazon before the day began. And here are Mary France and Patrice. Another Nationals and another chance for a Canadian title. And they're getting into the character of Singing in the Rain.
Let the stormy clouds chase everyone from the place. Come on with the rain and a smile on my face. I walk down the lane with a happy refrain. There is little doubt that this team will be going to the World Championship and hoping that that number will help propel them towards a free dance that will result in a higher placing than eighth. That's where they finished last year. Their marks from the national. To Bright, Patrice Lausanne, two-time Canadian champions. Uh, however, this is the first year that this scoring system is being implemented at the national championships. It will be used universally after this. And so, really, I think everybody's kind of playing wait and see. And, and maybe in years past, you would say, well, De Bruyne is on prohibitive favorites. But we'll have to see what the rest of the field does. Watch the footwork section here. There was a slight touch down there, which was out of sync for Marie France. But it didn't happen on this. The twizzle se section looks very clean. Yeah, well skated that section was. The overall performance, I thought, was lovely. I thought they, they captured the rhythm of the dance, the flavor of the dance. Uh, technically, though, they had a few little miscues that may not prove to be too costly here. Of course, at the World Championships, where it is very tight among the top, that can make the difference in a couple of places. Uh, the other concern I had was on the combination spin. Uh, Marie France had a little bit of a, a touchdown there. The technical specialist will go over that, and that is uh, quite a demanding job watching to make sure the exact um, rotations are there in the spin and that she didn't touch down during it, which can drop it. So it looks to me now with these marks, they wow. didn't drop. They got very strong prog program component marks, as they should. They have built up a big lead over wing and low. Heading to the free dance, probably insurmountable, depending on what happens. But it is a big, big lead, and it goes to show you where De Bruyne is on rank right now. You know, being world contenders, wing and low, 95-74 right now in second place. Almost 10 points, full points back. In fact, more than 10 points back. That is a big lead under this system, especially in dance. Patino and Denis. And uh, some of the other skaters are skated earlier. We have one flight to come. Five more dance teams. They have a flood on the ice. Let's go down to Dave Randorf. Dave? And I'm with the leaders, Marie Franz de Broglie and Patrice Lozon, the defending Canadian champions, two-time Canadian champions. And after all those years of fighting to get to the top, you're there now, and you just seem so comfortable there. I was watching you before you skated. You guys are at ease and no nerves. You just seem very comfortable. Yes, well, it's a thrill to be back home. It's always such a pleasure to skate in front of Canadian crowds, and we have a lot of gratitude towards them because they really give us the energy to pu push ourselves to perform more. So uh, it's it's been a thrill. You know, uh, we know what we're going to get from De Bruyne and Lausanne, technically demanding performances, often dramatic performances, but this one's so light and fun. Uh, Singing in the Rain, tell us about this one, Patrice. Oh, we, lo we love this program. We wanted to do it for so long, and it's our little baby, and we love it, and it, the crowd loves it too, and it's great to see. It was. You can't help but uh, smile when you're watching it. Congratulations, and we'll see you tomorrow.
Thank you. Back to you guys. Well, that beats their best OD by five points this season. So nothing better than improving on the year. They lead. More to come from London. Right now, my oldest one is going through a can skate program right now, and the, the the amount of improvement that they make and the people that work in the can skate program do marvelous stuff. It's such a joy to watch, and it puts it all into perspective when you see how hard it is to actually learn. Where were you 25 years ago, by the way? 25 years ago, I don't know. You know where you were? You were winning the junior dance championship. Oh my gosh! Canada. Thanks. <laughs> 25 years ago, With Mark eh? Stokes. Wow, it takes you back away. And yeah. uh, now we can take a look at uh, today's Junior Dance Champions of Canada as we take a look. Uh, this is also the Junior Championships, and here they are. This is uh, Siobhan Karam and Joshua McGrath, the new Junior Dance Champions of Canada. <laughs> Skating to Once Upon a Time in Mexico. And this is a team that last year was sitting in first place, had a chance to win the title, but a major fall in the free program dropped them to third. Because of that, of course, they didn't win the title, but they also lost out on a trip to Junior Worlds. Over three years ago, they moved down to live in Windsor, moved from Ottawa to train with Igor Spielban and Marina Zueva, who also coach Wing and Low and Virtue and Moyer. No mistake in this free dance. Canadian gold. Siobhan Karam, Joshua McGrath. And uh, you can watch the junior championship on TSN on March 12th. We will have the entire competition for you as we welcome you back in live to the team that won the junior championship last year, has made the leap to the senior ranks. And here they are. Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer grew up in London area, hometown favorites, learned the dance game in Kitchener, trained there for a few years, and have now moved down to Detroit.
I was born and raised in London, Ontario. I'm the youngest of four children. I got involved in figure skating actually because of a school trip. Um, my class was going <laughs> public skating and I really wanted to be able to skate with my classmates. I was born and raised in Aylderton, Ontario. It's just a small rural community outside of London, about 15 minutes. I'm the youngest of three boys. We're a very competitive family and we're all skaters. It's just a whole big skating family. I met Scott when I was about six or seven at the Lucan Summer Skating Camp. And I didn't really even talk to him that much. I was always intimidated. <laughs> he was always, you know, the outgoing Moyer boy <laughs> who everyone wanted to be friends with. So I was kind of shy and getting to know him was just great. Scott and I both started skating at the Elderton Skating Club, doing our first jumps there, first dances. From the beginning when I started to skate with Tessa, uh, I knew that she'd be a good partner. Tessa, here is my picture in perfect cursor writing. To the best partner ever. I love that. With Scott and I skating together for so long, we really do have a brother-sister relationship. And I think that's maybe the reason we can create such a connection on the ice, and I hope that's apparent to the audience, mm. just to show our love for the sport. Working with Suzanne Killing and Paul McIntosh was amazing for Scott and I. They really built our careers. We're still using all of their um, important information that they've given us, their experiences, their opportunities that they provided us with. We had an incredible seven years with them, if you can believe it. And <laughs> um, we really just wanted to build upon that with Igor Marina and in our move to Detroit, um, we're still taking a part of our old training with us. Yeah. Scott and I felt that the move was necessary um, just for motivational purposes. We're really um, learning a lot. I think we've improved like our power and our elements are a lot stronger. And I mean, we're, we're really ready, like we're, we're training. Igor and Marina are a great team together and we just feel a lot stronger on the ice. Scott and I are both really excited to be um, senior at Nationals this year with it being our hometown and the support we receive from London is just incredible and that really drives us uh, to be the best that we can be. And we just want to go and have a great time and take it all in and enjoy the ride. Man, they're only 15 and 17. The ride's just begun. I'll tell you who else might not be enjoying the ride so much. They're sitting up with Dave Randorf. Dave. I can only imagine what parents must go through sitting in the hometown rink watching their children compete. This is Jim and Kate Virtue, Joe and Elma Moyer, and they're all watching the warm-up. Uh, Jim, you're the closest to me. I'll let you be the spokesman for the group. What a thrill. What a thrill to watch them compete here, their first senior nationals at home. Uh, it couldn't be more exciting, Dave. We're just thrilled. The crowd has been superb all week, and uh, we couldn't be more delighted. Now, Elma, I understand that there are Moyers scattered all over the place here in this ring today. I think half the crowd are Moyers. <laughs> How many tickets do we have here between the Virtues and the Moyers here today? Well, it may be in triple figures anyway. <laughs> well, listen, the competition's about to begin. I'll let you get back into your seats. Thanks for doing this, and enjoy. Thank you very much. Rod? All right. That's what the Nationals are all about especially when you get a chance to compete on home ice this team has an outstanding original dance tracy wilson well they do and if you look at the standings this year in uh, competition they're way up overall in the last two seasons they've got the number 17th rated program done in the world senior or junior quite a remarkable team on the ice chantal lefebvre and arseny markov currently sitting in third place This team finished third last year. Been together for a short time. Still awaiting some citizenship for our Arsini. Russian born. Well, they're in a very close battle for second with wing and low. But they will not be eligible because of his citizenship to compete at the World Championships this year, even if they finish in the top two. Straight line sequence here. Very sharp. Ah, oh, nice. Good unison.
very difficult footwork sequence, so they're losing a little bit of the speed, almost at a standstill at the midpoint of that sequence. What a striking team. And they went after this very aggressive skating. They will be eligible for next year's Worlds in four continents. Our city would need citizenship in Canada to go to the Olympic Games. Says it won't be a problem. Saw Shailen Bourne there. Lefebvre and Markov at the Nationals. Marks next. Works with Lefebvre and Markov, also working with Nikolai Morozov. Chantal Lefebvre, of course, a few years ago skated with Michelle Brunet and went to a couple of world championships. And Olympic Games, and this is uh, only their second year as a team. Look at their footwork, very difficult. A lot of work on one foot, which doesn't allow them to push to kind of gain speed. So you've got to keep your thigh moving. You've got to keep the knee bending to keep the rhythm and to keep generating flow. So they did get a lot of slow there. Uh, uh, they did uh, slow down there and lose some flow. But I thought, you know, I liked their aggressive style. It was a dynamic performance, not smooth and schmaltzy like wing and low, but uh, they really went after it. A little bit messy in places, but overall, let's see where this is gonna put them. Boy, it's very close, very close. between wing and low and Lefebvre and Markov. 0.67 between the two wow, teams. that's tight. Very tight. De Bruyne is on leaders by a long shot, but again, it, I suppose when you think about a wing and low, even if they did finish third, they probably would go to the World Championships anyway, but we'd have to decide that, of course, after the free dance on Sunday. See what happens in the free dance. Wing and low. Lefebvre and Markov tight right now. Still to come. Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer, and on the ice, Laura Sumrick and Kevin Gallagher. This team, junior dance team, a year ago, finished 12th in the juniors. Just doing a little housekeeping, something on the ice. This would be rather daunting, especially after coming from the junior ranks and skating after some of the higher ranked teams well they've only been together for about seven months so quite unnerving well, they'll skate to got my own thing now and ain't that a kick in the head opening with a very difficult midline step sequence They have a natural ease uh, across the ice. They get some good flow. Work again on one foot. 
course, a higher degree of difficulty for that. They have good speed. With only a few steps, they're able, able to cover the ice. Great quality to have. That's a big test. Skating on the big ice at the senior level and they certainly passed it Sumrick and Gallagher will have their marks and then this house will go crazy as the hometown kids are next this team again traded uh, trained it down the 401 in Kitchener and then traded places, went down to Detroit to work with Spielman <laughs> and some of the high-ranked teams in the world. And, of course, they have a huge fan club here because they're from here. Well, they have to be careful because the tendency when you're skating at home is you just you want to try so hard to, to show off for your hometown audience. And they've got to keep calm and keep cool and play their own game. Mentioned you won a junior title. And then a couple of years later, skated with Rob McCall and began a dynasty. Hard to believe that those two have skated for such a long time already, and they're only 15 and 17. They've skated as long together, I think, as Rob and I in our entire career. But uh, that's, that's how you develop the qualities that you need to compete with the best in the world. Sumerk and Gallagher currently in seventh. Our next competitors represent Western Ontario. This is the team of Here they are, junior champions a year ago. Everybody's talking about Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer. Ready to dance at the Nationals. They'll perform a slow fox trot and then a quick step, skating first to Call Me irresist Irresponsible and then putting on the wrist.
There's the Moyer brothers. You just saw them. Charlie was actually helping out on the ice earlier. He heard himself in a hockey incident the other night. Should be proud of their brother. These kids got it. They just got it. Has not been a team come from the junior ranks and created such a buzz since Shay Lindbourne and Victor Kraus. And these two have the same kind of potential and the same kind of future looming for them. What wonderful qualities. Smooth skating. They edgy. dance. Exactly. They use the knee bend and the edges to capture the rhythm in the music. And very difficult footwork. Most of that was done on one foot. A little bit of a slip there where Scott got so into it, just a little overboard, a bit of a struggle into the lift, but that was the only struggle in this program. Look at the skating on one foot. They're twizzling and doing the edges, and now they just put the other foot down. They dance, they naturally feel the music, they have a sense of the, of the nuances in the dance and that's something that's so hard to teach but that is what makes them so infectious with the audience they just bring the audience out of the seats and onto the ice with them and include them in the dance and they're, the music they're also going to be the owners the proud owners of a new toys r us franchise here in uh, the london area <laughs> they, they have more teddy bears and gifts but they get a similar response anywhere they skate and and that is because of the way they're able to use the music they're still piling this stuff in the bags back there but you know the, you dance has gone through so many different evolutions and revolutions the last few years that you know some of the lifts that are done nowadays you, you wouldn't see on a dance floor and it's refreshing to see someone who goes out there and dances and the things they do you might see on a dance floor or would see now let's see where they will be placed. 56-3-3 is the fourth best original dance so far for the youngsters. And right now they are in fourth place. Virtue and Moyer. And a couple of more dance teams to come. On the ice. Tannis Hurst and Ian Fotheringham. Again, another team that just coming into the senior level, rookies at the senior level. She was a 16th junior last year. Ian was without a partner last year. Well, they got together just for fun and thought, hey, we kind of, kind of like doing this. Let's compete. Only the funds were a problem and uh, Tannis knew somebody in the 51st division a police officer in Toronto and the guys got together on the force and, and had a fight night included boxing and all the funds raised have gone to support these two and their quest to be dance champions one day Lovely spin, a unique position, a great exit from it. And it's little moves like that that are, are going to help set this team apart and help them climb up in the ranks. They're in 10th place after the compulsory dance. moment now coming up to the twizzle section they twizzle in opposite directions problems on that section
That's Tannis Hurst and Ian Fotheringham. Team that just got together a year ago. This is a learning experience for them. For so many it is at the Nationals. I'm going to start by asking you what a thrill today to skate on home ice. How did you guys, you young guys, keep it together out there? It was really a great feeling. The crowd was really supportive, and it's so nice to be in our hometown of London. And I know this is a competition, so Scott, I'll ask you the hard question. Uh, technically, how did you think the skate went today? Uh, I thought the skate was great. Uh, we went out there, and we had a strong uh, technical skate, and if the audience really helped us through it, and it was just a great experience. Somebody threw a hockey jersey at you. <laughs> Yeah, I, was, I wish I could put it on. It was a Knights jersey, so that would have been great. But. <laughs> well, you have lots of friends and family supporting you here. It must be a special experience. Congratulations, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. Rod? Yeah, this has been a winning building for anyone from London. The London Knights hockey team, an undefeated record, 31 straight in the Ontario Hockey League this year. They'll have the Memorial Cup in this building in the spring. And the two kids from London put on a show today. Here's Tannis and Ian. And good on the 51st Division for raising money for these two. You know, it's people like that who get together. And as an athlete, we've all had that kind of help and support. And it really is what you need if you're going to get to the top. So way to go, 51st Division. And now our final dance team. It's been fun to watch this afternoon. Often we don't get a chance to watch so many different teams and we're talking about the higher ranked and lower ranked skaters and to get a chance to to show the differences between them all well you're getting to see skaters who are going after olympic titles and skaters who are their goal is to make it to the canadian championships and to do their very best and here on the ice melena todero and anthony evans They are skating to stepping out and plenty of money in you. They were sixth a year ago as juniors. I'm stepping out with my baby. Can't come on, cause I'm in right. It's for sure, not for me. That I'm all dressed up tonight. They'll be smooth on seven, cause I'm with my top hat and my white tie and my tails. Pants. As many of the teams have, they've struggled on their twizzle section. The rest of the program, though, is looking very smooth. Got some good speed. program great footwork sequences you know as ice dancers they probably spend more time on the ice training than any of the other disciplines because of the compulsory dance the original dance and the free dance four to six hours a day to make it to the top in in the world of ice dance Malena Todaro Anthony Evans and a lot of these teams will take from this as they get ready for their free dance the knowledge of what they have to do when they look the best teams eye to eye. Standings have not changed much from compulsory to original dance. However, the points, some teams creeping a little closer to others. Uh, this team, again, began the day in ninth place after the compulsory to Darrow and Evans. 
this is the one area where they struggled the twizzle section it got a little bit far apart and that's one of the ways you can tell the difference between the top teams and the teams a little bit further down is how close they skate together of course it's much more difficult when you're when you're very very close together and some of the newer teams you'll notice the big separations between the partners the coach Julie Marcotte is with them they train in Boucherville Julie's a new mom to Vincent Again, we talk about uh, the placements. Uh, Virtue and Moyer in fourth right now. They're a good seven points back, so the podium finish is going to be very difficult for the young team. Lefebvre and Markov close to wing and low. That looks like the battle for Sunday, and the Braille on. Look like they might be able to put the sails up and coast. And there's also a battle for spot number five, and that's a berth on the national team. And if you can make the national team, you're able to get out and compete on the international circuit. Very important. Yeah, only a half point separating five and six. Marie-France Debray, Patrice Lausanne look poised for a third national dance title. Wing and low in second place, Lefebvre Markov. Virtue and Moyer with six and a half points behind. Patton, Noah, and Denis. And also, Semth and Gislason. That will be the big fight tomorrow, it looks like. That and also between Wing and Low and Lefebvre and Markov. The free dance going tomorrow here in London. Oh, there are some London Knights fans. There they are. Well, quite a day. For Virtue and Moyer, the Knights would be proud too. Good afternoon for DeBroy Lazan again, dancing like champs. Nationals be without uh, some snow and a blizzard <laughs> cool day outside and uh, for those of you who will be traveling to London tonight on the highways check the reports as well I know they closed down the 401 earlier today a lot of people taking the train out to London a uh, big night tonight upcoming the pairs free skate the men's free skate and it's snowing outside but singing in the rain stole the show this afternoon yes it did Marie France Dubray Patrice Lazan got their best scores ever and I think the the way they performed that dance it was just a heartfelt performance and they captured the music got very high component marks and and that's what they're gonna have to do with this original dance when they take it to the world championships a very important the expression it was just so nice to see them be able to perform it like that here they have uh, for many years were like that that bubble team uh, trying to crack the top 10 we're in 10th place eighth last year you kind of make constant improvement improvement every year is this a performance and the free dance tomorrow capable of lifting them up into the top five do you think it is but it is so tight at the top and it's so hard to improve when you when you get to that level I think what they did with this program they just captured the mood of, of the audience they kind of cast a spell across the building and that's the kind of stuff you have to do you have to find something that sets you apart from the very best in the world that has the potential they've got to smooth it out technically though because they can't leave any room for the judges to mark them down kind of funky uh, skate Canada will declare the team tomorrow um, for the world championships uh, two entries in each discipline if Chantal Lefebvre and Arseny Markov finish second they will not go to the world's that's right and that's because of the res residency problems and uh, they will though be have their paperwork in order so they can go on the Grand Prix circuit next year and uh, hopefully we'll be able to if they earn a spot they can move on to the world team or the Olympic team but they're in quite a fight uh, with wing and low and Megan and Aaron have have trained hard all year they're injury free they have a good free dance and uh, so they're gonna come out with guns a blazing tomorrow too and don't forget about the kids who are nipping at the skate heels of all of these these teams and uh, I don't think it would be uh, uh, too outrageous to say that someday Virtue and Moyer 
will become Canadian champions. I think everybody who watched them skates uh, have, have the same thought. Not just they'll be Canadian champions, but uh, they could do some terrific things for this sport. They could really bring the dance back to ice dance. Wouldn't that be nice to see? People in London love them. Uh, don't forget, tomorrow we'll have all the dance teams as the finale to a week at the National. Afternoon at the Nationals, the BMO Financial Group Canadian Championships again. Uh, We'll preview tonight. It should be an exciting night here. Hopefully the men will rise up. Uh, it was the case of last man standing, it seemed, last night. Emmanuel Sandu and Jeff Buttle will go at it tonight. Ben Ferreira, the men's free skate. We have the pairs free skate. But Tracy Wilson, you know, to get here, you have to start here. And, you know, this is a very special week for the junior skaters, too. It is for the junior skaters to be out here watching some of their idols in, in Canadian figure skating and then being on the same competition ice and it it's fun for the audience and for us to look into the future of the sport and see some of the great kids coming up like the the winner in the men's competition in the junior men's uh, Patrick Chan and he has the same qualities that Virtue and Moyer have you know you look at this kid and you think he's got it well let's take a look back now the short program of Patrick Chan who became Canada's junior champion for 2005 <laughs> Glad you're joining us. Let's go. combination in his short program and you can see not only can Patrick jump but he's got a great flow and speed across the ice quite a presence he trains at the Granite Club and is coached by Osborne Coulson lovingly referred to as Aussie in the sport Quite a senior move, triple loop, out of back three turns. Patrick is the youngest skater in this event, 13 years of age. Former pre-novice and novice Canadian champion. Oh, nice double axle. You can see that that can easily become a triple jump, and he'll need that when he moves up to the senior rank. Well, the youngest skater in the event. And after the free skate, he became the junior champion of Canada. Patrick Chan from Patrick Toronto. Chan. And here are the young men who competed. Kevin Reynolds was second. And some of the others from coast to coast. And the junior men, Patrick Chan, the champion. Falling on two jumps, like, really didn't think of really placing very well or getting really good marks or something. But I think what really saved me was the fact that I did, I came back at the end, did some jumps at, at the, after the half mark, so, which gave me extra points, so. 
I think he got a lot of extra points from his coach, Osborne Colson. Uh, Ozzy, uh, how proud of you were of uh, Patrick this week? Well, I think he's a wonderful talent, and I think he's a great guy to work with. He loves to skate, and I, I see a great future, really, in the skating. And I think that we just got to get in a little more ammunition under our belt will be away. Ammunition, you mean jumps and in particular a probably a triple axle? Triple axle. We're working on it now. He, he seems very mature when you when you watch his, his presence on the ice at 13 and you listen to him being interviewed. Are you, are you impressed by his maturity? What's he like as a person? I encourage the maturity of all skaters, all my pupils, because I think it's essential when they're in this business to be able to handle something other than the jump on the ice. How long have you been in the business for? Um, 55 to 60 years. And have you had a talent to work with, like Patrick? Where does he, where does yes, he rank I've for you? Yes, I've had the Karen Preston, one Canadian, and I had uh, Donald Laws in the States, and Don Tobin in Canada, all champions of ca their do you, countries. Do you know you also share a title with Patrick? Do you, you know you were the junior champion? In 1933? <laughs> I think it was 36. <laughs> oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that must be correct. Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. Well, he's in good hands, and all the best to you both. Well, thank you very much, Thank Tracy. you, Ozzy. Wonderful being on with you. All right, Patrick Chan, the champion. Great coach, Ozzy Colson. We'll be back to London with more. Emmanuel Sandu, uh, Buttle is the leader right now. Tracy, last night the triple axle was the problem for everybody. Well, yes, it was, and uh, most of the skaters struggled on the triple axle. And tonight, for Emmanuel Sandu, the quad is key because he's one of the only skaters that will be trying it. I think with this new system, the uh, skaters really weighing their options, and many of the skaters are leaving the quad out. Yeah, the strategy, however, is still very much with the quad. Here at Canadians in the short program, uh, the quad is... This program has land more quads than anybody else. Remember Skate Canada. He came from a long way back and won, and he's going to have to come back tonight. He trails Jeff Buttle. Well, he does, and if he can land the quad, we can see that kind of drastic movement uh, as he did at Skate Canada, where he went from seven to first. And he's the only one that we expect will do the quad in the men's free tonight. Emmanuel Sandu has won three national championships. Let's go down to Dave Randorf. Well, guys, I'm down here backstage with a gentleman who was a four-time Canadian men's champ, world champion in 1962, Mr. Donald Jackson. Uh, Donald, you were here last night. You watched the men's program. Your impressions on what was a, a, a real nervous short program for the men? Well, I think it could be nervous because this is the first time they've used the new system of uh, judging in the Canadians. And uh, I think everyone's trying to find out where they can get those little extra tenths of a point. And uh, nobody really knows, and it seems like... Uh, you know, we're always nervous. It's harder to uh, do your uh, the best job at Canadians because that's where you where you're going to have to skate well and uh, hopefully make it to the next level up. Do you think skaters are maybe doing math in their head as they're skating, trying to add and subtract as to where they can maybe throw an extra element in? I don't think they can. I think they have to have it uh, in their practice sessions and uh, just know if they do make a mistake that they can't add another element because it'll take away from uh, one of the jumps or, or whatever they might have. So they can't really add. They have to be just well prepared. Do you like the new system? I love it. I think it's giving uh, credit to not just the, ju the jumps, but also the footwork, the spins, and everything. Well, it's uh, great to see you. You look great. Enjoy tonight, and uh, we'll see you in your hometown next year at Canadians in Ottawa. That's right, Ottawa. We're all looking forward to everyone. Thanks, Donald. Thank you. Donald Jackson still skates. He's the first man ever to land a triple Lutz in world competition back in the 60s. We'll be back to London right after this. Canadian men's champion later tonight down the dial on CTV and only a point and a half separating the top three pairs teams. Free skates tonight, 8 o'clock on CTV from the BMO Financial Group Canadian Skating Championships.